Now, if you've been watching me for a while now, you guys would know I like buying cars with a little bit of history. And I'm always looking for a new project. And that's why when Everyman Racing called me to say that they might have a few cars that I may be interested in, my fingers started itching. So who are Everyman Racing? And why do they have two cars that I might be interested in? Well, Everyman have a bunch of racetracks scattered around the UK where they take customers out on a supercar experience day. Their customers get to choose their favourite supercar and drive it around the track. They have everything from Ferraris, Lamborghinis, McLarens and Porsches. But as you can imagine, with a huge fleet of supercars comes a massive upkeep. And it just so happens a few of them have not been kept so well. There's two specific cars he's mentioned that are going to be, well, he's trying to sell and maybe I might be interested in. But there's also going to be a lot more that is there as well. And you can imagine the life that they have had being on the track for this amount of time. So I'm excited. I'm nervous at the same time because this could take a massive hit in my wallet. But <laughs> let's see what they've got when we arrive. <laughs> so this is the huge unit where I imagine a lot of the cars and distressed cars could be and potentially a new project. Let's go and have a look. This unit was incredible. Already you can see the amount of supercars we're surrounded by, but not all of them are for sale. Brad, who was our tour guide for today, started showing us around a few of the cars which were under the covers, one of them being an E46 M3 GTR. He mentioned that this car has been driven around the track once and then's just sat there since. What a shame. But unfortunately, that one was not for sale. So we continued our tour around this amazing unit. Ferrari 458s, Lamborghini Huracans, you name it, they've got it. My guy lives outside at all. How many of these have issues? Oh, I wouldn't buy one. <laughs> no, I would have thought so. You gave me a 430. <laughs> so I've been Jack telling said him. the same, so yeah. Yeah, they, they yeah. have nightmares with them, don't you? Old 360s are a far better car. Brad gave us his full experience with the supercars as he knows them pretty much inside out and all the little problems and quirks that come with them. But not only did they have the cars stored inside, there was also even more cars outside. Aston Martins, Nissan GTRs, Every single car you could imagine was there. Yeah. So that's oh, that's easy. nice, isn't it? Moving back inside to some of the damaged cars, here's a McLaren MP4, which surprisingly has fire damage. And then this Nissan GTR, which seems to have been stripped to pieces. That took my interest. <laughs> What's up with this one? Uh, engine. So if a car's broken, say if you need an engine or something, my lads will just come in and go, right, oh, it's just a, a car's car. Like, bang. Oh. Yeah. You don't like doing it, you end up having a car. Yeah. But it wasn't long until we found the holy grail of Lamborghinis. The Lamborghini Murcielago. Now this car was for sale. Okay, this is what we what we calling this potential project number one, Mercia Lago. Literally, it's been my dream car since I was about two, definitely two when it wasn't out. It is absolutely unreal. And what makes this even better? This is a gated manual, and it's just sat here, completely covered in dust. Let's go around. Hannah's gonna get her shoes dirty. I'm not getting my shoes dirty. <laughs> Of course, it's got the famous, are we calling them, do they call them butterfly doors? Lamborghini doors. It's just a Lamborghini doors. But the good thing about this one, I'm going to say this one, there may be another one in a moment. All the body panels on this look pretty good. And just take a look inside there. It is just full of parts and it might look a bit stressful to some people, but to me, this is, it's making me happy. Like this is making me very happy. <laughs> you can see how good of a life it's actually had here just from the, actual stress on these tires but 
I'm pretty sure it's wrapped. I'm pretty sure the sort of bat wings at the back, which open up, I'm pretty sure they're carbon wraps, it's not genuine carbon. But there's one vital thing that this Mercer Lago is missing, and it's the V12, which should be in the back, <laughs> along with the manual gearbox. And apparently this had a chain rattle. So um, again, apparently a common problem. I don't know anything about V12s. I just know they sound absolutely sick. So the engine had to come out, someone's rebuilt the engine, when they went to put it in, turned it over, it was a little tight, so the whole car just got put on hold and abandoned there, and it sat here actually for seven years, which is why the guys at Everyman Racing have said, maybe this could be the car for you. Is this gonna cause me more headaches than I actually need though? So bad news, there's no engine or gearbox inside this thing, which could be expensive. The good news is, there's an exhaust, there's engine parts, there's an inlet manifold, a manual gearbox, and a complete engine. So there is a full car here, just not together. The thing is, we know the problem with the engine, and these V12 engines are definitely not the easiest to work on, I'm sure. But let me show you this. If we pop over to Auto Trader and search for Lamborghini Murcielago, we can see there's only eight for sale in the whole of the UK, which just goes to show how rare they are. The cheapest one being an E-Gear at £129,000. And for me, I only think these prices are going upwards. The problem is with these cars, there are a lot, there is a lot of expense in the parts. So even the tiny little things like the washer covers on the front, of the headlights they can cost an absolute fortune so luckily we do have this we do have the headlights and everything else seems in fairly good order the guys have just said they can get the car up in the air so we can have a look underneath it as well so let's have a look underneath but i'm pretty confident with this one that's going to be looking in fairly good condition minus the engine now i think we could get this Mercer Largo at a really good price being that it sat there for seven years but before I make any offers, I always check it out using Car Vertical. So after checking the Mercer Largo, I can see I've got a green tick at the top here for no mileage fraud, a green tick that has not been recorded as stolen, a green tick that there's no recorded accidents, and there's no outstanding finance. As I scroll through the Car Vertical report, I can see when the vehicle was first registered, all the MOT tests it's had, when any license plates have been changed, and the last record of this car was in 2009. Further down the report here, I can see that all the mileage all lines up. And then most importantly, there is no reports for damage. So that report has came back pretty positive, but let me show you what a bad report looks like. And now on this report, we can see an amber light for mileage and an amber light that has been recorded in an accident. And when we scroll through, we can see the discrepancy in the mileage here in the graph. And further down, I can see that this car has had two damage records. And what's even better than that, Car Vertical are even showing me the pictures of the damaged car when it was auctioned off at the Car Crash Auction website. So to check your car out, a friend's car, or a car that you're potentially about to buy, you can do by clicking the link in the description box below. And with my link, you're going to save yourself a nice bit of cash as well. Thanks Car Vertical for sponsoring this video. Back to the Mercer Largo. Now the guys have got the Mercer Largo in the air so we can have a look underneath it. And seeing as this car has been around the track a fair few times, Underneath still looks fairly clean and there's definitely no damage under there. But I didn't want to get carried away too much because Brad mentioned there may be another one that I might be interested in, but it's in a bit of a tricky spot. Sure. What's up? Oh, there's a girl I'd to climb on there. Huh? There's a girl I'd to climb on oh, there. Oh, there we go. So what's up with this one at the up there? There's that one up there. The engine went away to BHP. He rebuilt it when it came back to us. It had almost like a timing misfire or something like that. But it was when right. the engine went back in, he'd rebuilt it, and that's when the car went back to him. Then, but it's all complete as is as it sits. Oh, okay. And it's um, but it just has a funny. Does it start and run, or is it just it, like? If we got to jump pack off and put a, you know put a battery on it and like things like that, it would start and run. Yeah. Okay, but it's, it's just got a just misfire. Sort of, it's got a misfire or something. Right. Yeah. Right, I don't want to. It's only light, innit? Let me climb on your shoulders. <laughs> oh my god. Right, safe thing. Things we do. So, this one 
either could be more of me or less of me. Look at that. Mercial Argo, again. Oh my God. I'm covering cobwebs. <laughs> I'm just crawling next to a girl, hold on. Here she is. Mercial Argo, again. It's quite actually difficult to see. Um, the engine is in this one. And this one does actually look in a little bit better condition. I don't think it's wrapped. I don't think it's wrapped. A little bit of lack of peel here and there. Okay. <laughs> and here we have a Lamborghini Machinaga. Not much chance of me being able to open that, is that? There we go. Interiors all in to an extent. The leather actually looks okay. This is probably the worst. So this is the worst show around ever. I just want to see the front. The front end is all oh good. PPF'd as well. No wiper blades for some reason. It's actually not in bad condition, but as you probably heard, there is a small issue with the engine and I think it's got a timing misfire. Um, but this one feels a little bit more doable than the other one, which the engine is completely out on and we don't know who's worked on it, what's happened to it. Um, one thing I wanna know from you guys is should I pull the trigger on one of these? Do we send it? It's not crash damage, but it is a lot of work still. So here's the situation. The green one is in worse estate, but it is a manual. The yellow one is in a pretty, it's not a bad condition, but I think it's e-gear. Of course we want the manual one, but do I want the headaches of having to rebuild an engine which somebody else has already molested? Or do I want to rebuild an engine which could just be a timing issue on the yellow one, but then have an e-gear at the end? So what we're just about to find out, we're just gonna ask the mechanic here, who's got experience with it, how easy is it to convert an e-gear to a manual. Let's find out. Free shoot. <laughs> it turns out it's manual. Worry, worry over. This could be an expensive trip. It's a gated manual. That The worry is over. I think we could have made one of the most expensive trips we've ever done so now. <laughs> you guys have got to let me know in the comment section below. Which one are we going for? Shall we do it? Or do we abandon and run ship to something else? But a Mercial Argo do, does not come up every five minutes and when there's two and I've got the chance of getting one, I, I'm excited, I'm excited. So I still leave this place feeling excited but also anxious. This could be one of the biggest risks I've ever taken with a car. Well that was different to usual and a very different video. I've not fixed anything but have looked at stuff which I could potentially fix or try to fix. That was absolutely unreal. And thanks so much to Everyman Racing. Please, all of you guys, as a special thank you, go and follow them on Facebook for letting me have a look around the unit, letting us film as well. And potentially, maybe, release some funds to buy the next project car, a Mercial Argo. How cool is that gonna be? Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. That is what you call precision. You're like a drug there.